A painstaking, complex investigation. Extreme weather, a massive crash site, and still a scene of horrific devastation. All conspiring against the search for evidence. These, the first photographs taken inside the police cordon, only hint at the scale of the operation. It's why the families of the victims continue to endure an agonizingly long wait. The devastation was so great, identifying and recovering bodies is proving extremely difficult. So difficult that some of the remains of the victims may never be found. I totally understand the frustrations and we have 24 really highly trained officers working with those families to support them and to ensure they're getting the most accurate and up-to-date information that they possibly can. It's a really complicated and long and methodical process to identify the victims and to secure the scene. Now we have, again, trained officers, specialist um, scenes of crime officers, CSI as people will be familiar with, and we have a lot of those staff at the scene still gathering physical evidence. There is a very high probability, given the nature of the explosion and the size of the crash site, that not all the remains will be recovered. That is absolutely the case, um, and that is one of the reasons why we are so meticulous and so, and so thorough in our gathering of the evidence, because we want to uh, help the families understand as much as they can what happened to their loved ones. The um, bodies are in different conditions, and as the coroner has said, the actual identification process, albeit we have lots of options open to us to help identify, whether that's through fingerprints, through DNA, um, even through people's teeth, you know, that is um, a very long, drawn-out process in some of these cases. The welfare of the families is the priority. But everyone who witnessed those distressing scenes will be haunted by what they saw. There was uh, some sort of incident on the A27, cars on fire, um, lots of injuries. PC Chris Storey was one of the first responders to get to the site. A hardened traffic policeman with more than 20 years experience. But nothing could prepare him for what he saw. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen, ever. It's the sort of thing you see on a film. Um, lots of damaged vehicles, lots of debris everywhere. Um, yeah, pretty horrendous. It was really, really quiet, really quiet. Um, no birds, no aircraft noise, no traffic. Obviously the road was shut in both directions. Uh, Nothing. Yeah, there was there were lots of deceased, um, a lot of them. And obviously, I don't want to talk about um, what I saw regarding that. I'd never attended anything on that sort of scale or magnitude, really, um, and it it sort of takes your breath away when you first get there and you see this entire scene ahead of you. You know, I, I know it's my job and part of that is seeing some pretty awful things. Um, but this was on a different scale altogether. I couldn't help but, you know, think about the poor people who had been involved and had lost their lives um, and the amount of them. I've thought about it every day. I don't see how you couldn't, really. And the fact that some of them haven't even been reunited with their loved ones yet, you know, that's a hard part of the job. The investigating team, that's a, going to be a, you know, a, hard, a hard job in itself. Air crash investigators have removed the plane's fuselage. It will be a main focus of their search for evidence. So too will be the testimony of pilot Andy Hill. He's still in a critical condition. According to research by Boeing, people are responsible for 80% of air crashes. But that figure includes sabotage, mechanics and air traffic control. Pilots themselves are responsible for 50% of all air accidents. 
This is the last time the Hawker Hunter took off from its Essex base to fly to Shoreham. The footage of the 1950s military jet performing the loop will be poured over frame by frame by investigators. Such a beautiful aeroplane. We asked pilot instructor David Learmount to examine the film to see what they'll be looking for. Here he is running in, positioning himself to start his manoeuvre. And he's now supposed to be at about 500 feet. Now, 500 feet is really quite important because this is a difficult manoeuvre and, and it's only a small margin for error. Now, if something goes wrong with the aeroplane or if he gets his manoeuvre slightly wrong, you can crash straight through that. And we know, ultimately, this is what happened. And here he starts to pull up and he also starts to roll slightly right to change the direction of the, the display. And at this point, in some of the videos, there have been a couple of flashes that seem to come from somewhere near the aeroplane, but I don't think that they came from within the engine or anything else. Nothing fell off the aeroplane. We've seen so much video from so many angles, nothing fell off. And the engine sounds right. And the engines, the engine note, does. there's no bang from the engine, no backfiring sound, and the engine note continues at the same level that it was at before. The other thing is if the pilot reckoned that anything was seriously wrong at this point, all he'd have to do is to, is to roll his inverted aircraft upright and exit his display to be safe and go back and land. However, he continues with the manoeuvre. So and the G-force is greatest here. G-force, he's pulling hard at that point to try and get the aircraft to come to, to pitch round so that he's got time to get out of it. But th at this point... At this point, he relaxes that pitching rate, and I think it was because he pitched so hard in the early stages, he might have blacked out or partially blacked out. Then he relaxed, he got his consciousness back, looks out the window, realises that he's in a predicament, and then he's pulling up furiously. His way of trying to save everybody that was on the road is by seeing if he can get out of it in time, by pulling it up, but he pulls it through the stall, even though the aircraft's going quite fast. It can't provide enough lift for him to get away. Eleven families are grieving, desperately waiting for answers. They may soon learn how their loved ones died, but they will also want to know why. Ashish Joshi, Sky News, Shoreham.